Hello students, the theme of our lecture is the notion of intercultural communication. The plan consists of the object, subject, and research, and methods, and major trends in research. Object, subject, and research, or methods. The term intercultural communication in its narrow sense appeared in a well-known course book by Samovar in Porter Communication Between Cultures in the 1970s. By that time, the scientific school studying communicative failures in intercultural communication and their consequences had been formed. The notion of intercultural communication was later applied to translation studies, foreign language teaching, comparative cultural studies, constructive programmatics. Nowadays, intercultural communication studies is focused on the behavior of people faced with cultural differences in language activity and their consequences. The research resulted in a description of cultural specificity and expressing and interpreting the situational language actions of the communicants. This research has been practically significant and used in practical trainings developing cross-cultural receptivity. Intercultural communication as a social phenomenon was called into being by the practical needs of the post-war world supported by the interests in exotic cultures and languages. The practical needs were caused by rapid economic development of many countries and regions, groundbreaking achievements in technology and globalization of economy. As a result, the world has become smaller. The density and intensity of long-term contacts between representatives of different cultures have been increasing significantly. Apart from economy, the major zones of professional and social intercultural communication are education, tourism, and science. The acknowledgement of cultural diversity as an absolute value, the abolition of colonizing cultural policy, the realization of the most traditional cultures and languages fragility, and the threat of their extinction have caused the rapid development of the related disciplines based upon a new phenomenon of people's interest in each other. Intercultural communication is communication under conditions of cultural difference and a communicative competence of the participants, which is so considerable that this difference determines the success or failure of the communicative event. Communicative competence in this case means not knowing the science systems used in communication and the rules of their functioning as well as the principles of communicative interaction. Intercultural communication is characterized by the fact that the participants in a direct contact use special language variants and discourse strategies different from those they use for communicating within one cultural group. The term cross-cultural communication is frequently used to mention a specific phenomenon in two or more cultures. It also means comparing the communicative competence of the different cultural representatives communicating with each other. All representatives of Homo sapiens can develop communicative competence, but the realization of this ability depends on a culture. Besides, this ability depends on a unique individual experience of a man. It follows from this that in communication, which is a process of message exchange, meanings are always recreated since they are not the same, even for people speaking one language and brought up in one culture. It is obvious that when languages and cultures are different, the communication is so complicated that full understanding is impossible. Since his birth, a man belongs to many groups which are exactly where his communicative competence is formed. Larger groups, usually called cultures, have considerable influence on a cognitive and pragmatic basis of communicative activity. In a process of communication, messages are exchanged, that is, information is passed from one participant to another. A communicative event is a transaction when each of these sites acts in real time both as a source and a recipient. Interpretation of a message, for example, creation of a mutually acceptable meaning, requires cooperation. Thus, communication is a complex, personal, transactional, and often unconscious process involving science interpretation. Communication gives its participants an opportunity to express some external information, the inner emotions, as well as the status roles they play in relations with each other. A natural language is a totally semantic sign system. Nevertheless, its realization in real communicative events usually results in an acronym of the communicants about an interpretation of language meanings. This is favored by the cultural detriment communicative competence 
several types of general knowledge shared by the communicants. For one thing, this is the knowledge about the science system used in communication. For another thing, this is knowledge about the organization of the outer world. The knowledge about the outer world consists of the personal experience of an individual, the fundamental knowledge about the world possessed by all people and all other kinds of knowledge which people have due to their belonging to various ethnic, social, religious, professional and other groups. The difference in individual experience is the reason why every communicative event is unique and why language is fundamentally polysemantic when a message is produced and interpreted in a communicative act. The existence of the common knowledge about the world explains the fundamental transla translatability of message from one language into another and the possibility of, of understanding between the members of one language group using one sign system. More specific knowledge which is common for a certain group of people is the basis of producing an inner prodding messages. This group or cultural knowledge unconditionally determines the way the information received by an individual is interpreted in how a thought and pulse is formed for producing a message. Communication is intercultural if it takes place between representatives of different cultures and the difference between these cultures causes difficulties in communication. The difficulties may be related to the difference in expectations and presuppositions inherent in every man and naturally different in different cultures. Representatives of different cultures decode received messages in different ways. All these become significant only in a communicative act and cause misunderstanding and tension making communication difficult or impossible. Every participant of a cultural contact has its own system of rules functioning so that the message produced and received can be encoded and decoded. The process of interpretation is influenced not only by cultural difference but also by the age, gender, occupation, social status of the communicant. Therefore, the intercultural communication in every certain case depends on a tolerance, resourcefulness, and personal experience of its participants. It may be concluded that intercultural communication as a sum of relations of various forms and communication between individuals and groups belonging to different cultures. The spheres of macroculture and microculture may be distinguished in intercultural communication. Cultural types are distinguished according to the continental equitation and are called macrocultures because of their large scale. There are global differences between the macrocultures which influence their communication. In this case, intercultural communication takes place regardless of the status of its participants horizontally. Many people are involved in certain social groups with their cultural peculiarities. From the structural point of view, these are microcultures or subcultures within a macroculture. Every microculture is similar to and different from its macroculture at the same time, which ensures the same worldview of their representatives. In other words, subcultures are the cultures of different groups in strata within one society. Therefore, the relation between a subculture lies within the society and its vertical. Within each of the spheres, intercultural communication is carried out at different levels. There are several types of intercultural communication at a micro level. These are interethnic communication, communication among social classes and groups, communication between different demographic groups like religion, gender, and age, communication between city dwellers and villagers, the style and pace of the life, general level of education, the type of interpersonal relations, regional communication, and communication in business and culture. The common feature of all levels and types of intercultural communication is the fact that the cultural differences are not realized by its participants. It seems to them that their lifestyle is the only possible and right one that their values are understandable and acceptable for other people. An ordinary man begins to think about the reasons of his communicative failure only when he meets the representatives of a different culture and finds out that the original models of behavior do not work. Communication may be characterized by the type of communicative competence is conventionally used in a communicative event. 
for social communication, these are schemes and scripts of behavior in everyday situations. For professional communication, this is the sphere of knowledge related to the professional activity. Unlike the types of communication mentioned to Poof, interpersonal communication is based upon individual experience. And it is possible only when experience of the communicants is similar to a certain degree. Hence, different functional spheres of intercultural communication may be distinguished. These are interpersonal, social, public, intergroup, professional, mass communication, and communication within small groups. To study intercultural communication, one should be familiar with the following phenomena and notions. These are principles of communication, major functions of culture, influence of culture on perception and communication in its various spheres and types, and parameters of describing the cultural influence on activities of people. It is significant that many researchers are oriented towards practical application. Their results are meant to be used directly in the spheres of activity and occupations realized by means of communication. In such cases, it is called professional communication. These spheres include education, political activity, management, consulting, like including medical consulting, social work, journalism, and etc. The operational parameters for describing the influence of culture on human activities and social development have been formulated in the works by the anthropologist Cluckhan and Strabic, the linguist and anthropologist Hall, the sociologist and psychologist Hofstede. Cluckhan and Stopbeck notice cultural differences in the value systems which constitute the worldview of a culture. This worldview includes such fundamental features as attitude to time, activity, and nature, as well as the idea of interpersonal relations value. Major trends in research. Intercultural communication is studied by psychologists, sociologists, and linguists. They have different objects and methods of research. Sociologists working in a sphere of intercultural communication use the traditional method of questionnaire filled by specially selected groups of respondents. The questionnaires are oriented to defining the values and stereotypes present in human behavior. They mainly study behaviors at work, in professional interaction, in business. The reasons of this is the fact that sociological research data is used first of all by transnational corporations. Practical recommendations used in special intercultural trainings are formulated on a basis of the general conclusions made by sociologists about the types of behavior characteristics of and preferred by a certain cultural group. The typical object zones of the questionnaires are information exchange, interaction with co-workers, decision making, behavior in conflict situations, attitude to leadership, relation between work and private life, attitude to innovations. It is clear that most of the investigated cultural behavior stereotypes may be linked to the cultural parameters introduced by Hofstede. That is, why works of this kind are often carried out to check if these parameters are applicable in a certain environment. Changes are steady in relation to a period of time and the age of the object group often two or more cultural groups working together. More general sociological problems are social adoption of migrants, preservation or extinction of national minorities, traditional cultures, and etc. Psychologists studying intercultural communication are interested, first of all, in the influence of cultural difference on a process of interpretation and categorization, as well as the nature of respective behavior stereotypes. Since the 1970s, the important notions of anxiety, uncertainty, the potential scope of categories, the peculiarities of group categorization, and many others have been investigated the methods of social psychology. Speaking about communication, especially intercultural communication, it is very difficult to distinguish sociological research from psychological. Both of them deal with complex categories, emerging or transmitted in a process of communication, which are values, motives, ideas, stereotypes, and prejudices. The objective of each of them is to reveal a phenomenon, possibly linking it to others, and show its difference from such reactions and ideas in a situation of intra-group and not intercultural communication. And only linguists are interested in how the process works in the first place. 
What in the language message indicates the presence of intercultural communication? What are the peculiarities of message exchange representatives of different cultures? In what communicative context does it happen? And how exactly do misunderstandings and personal understanding work? And what language peculiarities and mechanisms allow or prevent compensating lack of understanding? Among the linguistic subjects, the closest to psychology is the study of various communicative styles and their use within and beyond a group. The psychological notion of accommodation is applied to such parameters of communication as speech speed, word choice, and conversation with a foreigner, a child, and etc. Simple or complex grammatical structure. Accommodation may be either positive, oriented to the interlocutor, or negative using a style of the highest difference from that of the interlocutor. The direction of accommodation and communication of different groups representatives depends on an attitude of one group to the other. The structure of relations includes bad, good, down, up, far, close, close. The opposition of speech and silence functions are of special importance. Thus, in European cultures, keeping silence in a situation of communication within familiar people is considered implied. This is why the phrase awkward silence in such special topics as weather were created for the situations of the so-called phatic communication aimed at maintaining a certain level of social relations. In the Athabascan culture of North America, conversation with a stranger is considered dangerous and inappropriate. They keep silence until they get to know the interlocutor well. Unlike in European culture, in this one, a conversation is not a way to get to know each other. Another important trend in linguistic research was caught into being by the recent rapid development of discourse studies, where discourse is regarded as an integral process essential in communicative activity. The complexity and many-sidedness of such phenomenon is discourse and the attempt to distinguish the major factors influencing its form stimulated the development of a range of schools studying the non-linguistics, besides grammar and vocabulary, factors of discourse. Among the pragmatic factors of discourse, factors of cultural character have been distinguished. Discourse on one topic, even if it's strictly conditioned, for example, a peasant letter, condolences, a speech admitting, excuse for a common late to not to mention the traditional genres, just fairy tales or ritual formulas may be significantly different in terms of discourse rules, the macro and micro structures used, depending on a culture of the group within which the discourse has been formed. Thus, in Southeast Asia, the text of a business letter is constructed inductively. The reasons come first, then come the conditions, and only in the end come the requirements or suggestions. The representatives of the European and North American cultures consider this style vague and unbusinesslike. From their point of view, such letters should begin with the main requirement or suggestion, followed by its grounding in details. Cross-cultural research of discourse as a whole may be aimed at revealing the cultural detriment worldview, which is reflected in description of events. Thus, in a book by Olivia Plani, telling the American story of 1989, an archetype of contemporary American consciousness, a set of some unformulated statements which are foreign presumptions both the speaker and the listener are guided by. A productive approach to this course research aimed at intercultural comparison is realized in the works by Ron and Susan Scollin, particularly in the book Intercultural Communication, a discourse approach of 1995, the scholars study the genre of professional communication and try to discover deductively the major cultural oppositions according to various discourse parameters. Another discipline studying the pragmatic aspects of discourse is the so-called cross-cultural pragmatics dealing with the comparative analysis of the communicative activity principles and corresponding cultural scripts. Among the most important and culturally contradictory pragmatic principles, Brown and Levinson's Courtesy Principle, and the numerous works on speech acts based in some way upon a principle. Interdictions, excuses should be mentioned. Cross cultural difference is revealed particularly in the type of courtesy, oriented towards either solidarity or keeping distance, is characteristics of a certain culture. Thus, 
The Russians may seem impolite to the Germans because the principle of solidarity with a communicated partner makes them express their opinions and give advice while the German communicative culture, respecting the principle of autonomy and distance, considers this to be obstructiveness. Another approach is realized in cross-cultural pragmatics research by Rysbika and her followers. Comparing words, constructions, texts, which are supposed to be equivalent in different languages and using the meta-language of semantic primitives, the scholar shows that direct translational equivalents may have significant cultural differences. When we speak, for example, about friendship, freedom, anchor, we involuntarily attach cultural determined meanings inherent in the corresponding words of a certain language to these notions. The functional approach was formed in the 1980s. It is based upon the methods of sociology and psychology. According to this approach, any culture may be described with the help of certain methods. Any change in a culture may also be measured and described. The culture determines human behavior and communication. Therefore, they may be described and predicted as well. The main objective is so is to reveal the specificity of culture impact on communication. Comparing the cultural difference of the size involved allows to predict the success or failure of their communication. The functional approach resulted in a communicative adaptation theory claiming that in situations of intercultural communication, people often change the models of their communicative behavior, adapting them to the models of their communicative partners. It is important to mention that the communication style is changed easier when communication is relaxed and calm or when a partners don't see a big difference between themselves and the inner blockers. The aim of the explanatory or interpreting approach is to understand and describe but not to predict the human behavior. The supporters of this approach regard culture as a human habit created and measured by communication. This approach uses anthropological and linguistic methods, rule games, participants, observations, and etc. The attention is usually concentrated on understanding communication models within a cultural group. Investigating intercultural communication with the explanatory approach, the scholars came to the conclusion that the communication rules of a group of people are based on a culture of values and ideas of this group. The supporters of the critical approach are above all interested in a historic context of the communication. They base their research upon assumptions that there are always power relations present in a communication. From this point of view, culture is regarded as a battlefield where the numerous explanations and interpretations of cultural phenomena are accumulated. There is always a dominating power determining the cultural differences and the character of explanation. The aim of intercultural communication studies ex explaining human behavior and changing people's lives through that. According to the supporters of the critical approach, the investigation and description of the power dominates in uncultural situations will help people to organize their communication with other people and cultures officially. The main method of the critical approach is text analysis. The most effective method of studying and teaching intercultural communication is training, which is a practical and intensive form of teaching, thus meeting the specific requirements of intercultural education. In trainings, the following methods are used, which are biographic reflection, field observation, interactive modeling, role games, self-assessment, and simulation. The first one, the biograph reflection method, is based upon trying to understand one's biography to clarify the foundations of one's identity and the forms of its realization in everyday life. The biography and analysis in a past situation's reconstruction give an opportunity to realize the feelings and understand the events which have determined the formation of a personality. The procedure helps to reflect over various sides of people's life to determine the nature of values and interests and therefore may be applied by many methodological approaches. The interactive modeling method is oriented to conscious reconstruction of various regularly arising individual and group situations of intercultural communication 
which helps to understand the interests of the interacting parties and their forms of behavior as well as to develop the ability to perceive the norms and values of a foreign culture. The self-assessment method is aimed at distinguishing the types of behavior and intercultural communication. This is achieved by means of pollen, structured observation, and tests. The results are used in a discussion of intercultural behavior types and their impact on intercultural communication. The simulation method is based upon predicting the possible variance in the results of behavior in artificial situations of intercultural communication. From the experience of practical application of these methods, it may be concluded that they may be used to compare two or more cultures drawing attention both to the common difficulties of communication process and to particular situations of intercultural communication. Using these methods and teaching intercultural communication helps to prepare various cultures representatives for effective context with foreign cultures and to teach them to understand their communicative partners and reach their aims. Thank you for attention.